Hello everyone, good morning or good afternoon depending on where you are and welcome to this second webinar on uh, the Webrezio 9 beta program which today is dedicated to the launch of the mobile platform. I'm Roberto Cerbis, the CIO of Webrezio and uh, here with me there is Michela Frigerio, our Head of Training and Customer Support. Michaela will take care of showing us the new mobile platform by realizing a fully functional mobile app from scratch using the WebRatio low-code method. This will also be the opportunity to show some of the recent improvements that we have released from the beginning of the beta program in November 2019. Uh, at the end uh, of the demo, we'll have the time to ask uh, uh, to some questions you can post using the dedicated Q&A tool of the webinar. So I immediately give the floor to Michaela for the demo that will take about 20 minutes and uh, see you later. Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, presentation about WebRatio Enterprise Platform 9 Beta focused on the mobile development. Today we are going to develop a mobile application managing customers and their offices. Let's get started by creating a new mobile project. The project has a predefined structure and we will concentrate on the app view which is the container of all our application features. Let's start by creating the main sections of this application, which are the customers section and the contracts section. These sections must contain at least one screen inside them because the screen is the uh, minimum information uh, used by the uh, user to navigate the application. To state that our sections are part of a menu, we have to set them as landmarks. Now we are ready to model the presentation of this navigation. So let's select the container of the entire model and let's switch to the layout view. Here you have a presentation modeling editor where we can model the graphic of the main menu. Let's select the tab bar widget and place it in the bottom area of the screen. With a double click, I can access the properties of this widget and let's state that we want to see an element for each object we state as landmark in the model. The editor is able to execute a set of predefined rules which adds other widgets inside our presentation and we are free to decide whether to keep these widgets or to substitute them with some others that we prefer. We can configure them further, selecting, for example, an icon for each uh, um, tab button here. And then we can confirm the configuration and we see a preview here about the menu. We can also test the application we have created right now using the generation uh, command. Here, uh, the tool is uh, transforming all the model in a real application that can be easily tested without having a physical device. We will emulate the application in a browser where we can test the user navigation and interaction and also we can see the data we are going to show to the user. Let's open the emulator and we are going to see the two sections that we have modeled in the, the project. Let's go back in the platform and let's add uh, the first content of our application, which is the customer's list. I will use at this purpose the hierarchy component and I have to configure this component to say that I want to see a list of customers. The platform requires me to select a data service project, which is the project where uh, it's centralized all the management of the information that the application will use. So I prepared in a, in a project at this purpose, I'm selecting this and from the list of the available information, I can select the customer object. 
Then I configure the list, selecting which are the characteristics of the customers that I want to include in this specific list, and I can also state which is the source of the list. I want also to see in this list uh, the offices uh, for each customer, so I add to this component a level. The level can be configured exactly like we did for the main component, so I select the information I want to see, which is the office, and then the information that I want to see for each office, uh, which is, for example, the name, the country, and uh, the region and the province. And also I select a sort for the list. An important information is the relationship between each office and the uh, customer to which the office belongs to, uh, so that the component is able to distribute properly the information among all our customers. Now we can switch back to the layout view and uh, prepare the graphic for the list of customers. Let's select the widget list and uh, let's configure it to see uh, a row for each customer of our component. And as you can see also in this case, the presentation editor adds other widgets to the presentation. And I can configure, for example, the list item widget, which represent a single customer. And I can say that, for example, I want to see on the left the logo of the customer, and that I want to see on the right all events I will model on the customer component. I can also say that I want to have an additional location to add other widgets that can uh, contain further details about the customer. In the main section of the list item, I add here uh, the other information about the customer, so the name and the VAT number. As you can see here, the preview updates showing me what I modeled, also with some sample values. In the location we have here, we can add another list widget, which now can be configured to contain the list of the available offices. So let me say that I want to have a row for each office. And then, as we did before, I configure the list item, which represents a single office, stating that I want to see on the right all the events that I will model on the uh, office level. And in the main section, I want to see all the information that I selected on the level to be visible. And as well, as we did before, the um, preview updates itself. Now let's go back to the app view because the information we added here uh, is available only when the user has logged in in the application. So we must set that uh, the sections of our application is, are protected, which means basically that the user must have access rights to see their content. And then let's add the model to uh, let the user log in. And we can use a predefined pattern for that. Now we are ready to generate the project and see the result. The generation process uh, is also able to create for me uh, a couple of credentials that, ca that can I use to, um, to log in in the application. So when the generation completes, I can test easily all the features that I've modeled right now. I have to update the emulator to load the new version of the application, and I will see uh, at the first screen the screen for the login. I write here the credentials. And I'm logging in. As you can see here, there is the list of customers with the uh, relative um, offices. Let's go back to the platform and let's add another feature to this application, which is the office management. Let's add a dedicated screen for this. The screen will contain a form for um, filling in the office information. 
to add the fields to the form, I use a, a wizard that let me to uh, choose uh, which is the information that I want to handle in this form, which is the office. And then I can also select which are the characteristics of the office that I want to handle in this form. So for example, the name, the country, the province and the region. The wizard creates for me all the fields related to the information that I selected before and it is also able to add automatically the validation rules uh, that have been modeled in the data service project relating to each information. If the type of the field created by the wizard is not the one that we want, we can use uh, the conversion feature and transform them into a selection field. Selection fields must be configured further in order to provide which is the uh, list of options between uh, the user can select uh, its own. So let's uh, configure this list as we did for the other component, saying that we want to see a list of country here ordered by uh, country name descending, ascending. Let's also configure in the same way the region field using the city information, selecting the region attribute and sorting the list by region ascending. And let's do the same for the province field. I use always the city element. I select the province information and I sort the list by province ascending. Let's filter the list of province um, restricting uh, the, the list um, depending on the provided region. So let's add a condition that checks that the provided region uh, is a specific one. And let's also state that uh, uh, is the region field that uh, triggers the loading of the province when the user changes the selection. The target of this event is uh, the form, the province field, and uh, the information that uh, is passing The information that is passing between the region field and the province field is the selected region. Now the form is completed. Let's concentrate on the uh, action that um, must be executed when the user confirms uh, the value field in the form. Let's add at this purpose an action uh, element and let's select which is the business logic executed by this action. And this business logic is contained by the related uh, data service project. And let's select the save office logic. This logic will be, will, will, will be triggered by uh, an event outgoing from the form, which is the save event. And we can bind all the fields that we modeled in the form with uh, one of the information required by the action to be executed properly. And we have also to um, bind the key of the office that we are editing and also which is the customer to which the office belongs to. This last information right now is not available in the model we have designed. So we have to add another element uh, which is a parameter on the screen. This parameter will contain the customer key. It's possible also to select a, a specific type for this information. Uh, this information will be set when the user selects an office from the list. So let's move to the hierarchy component and let's add an event to the office 
which is the event that lets the user edit a specific office. And this event has as, as target the office management form. And the information bind in this form are both the key of the uh, edited office and also the key of the customer of which the office belongs to. Once the information is set, it can be used in the binding we needed for the action, and we can pass the customer key parameter value to the customer key parameter required by the action. Let's complete uh, the feature adding a feedback message for the user in the home screen. This feedback message will be seen for both results of the action. So uh, either when the uh, logic execution is successful, and we can set a specific me message for this, but also when the logic fails for some reason. And I can set a message also for this specific case. Now we can model the presentation of the office management page. So let's switch to the layout view. And let's use at this purpose the container widget that lets me uh, obtain a row for each field of the form we have designed. I just have to select here that I want to see in this container all fields of the component form. As you can see, the uh, editor creates for me a set of widgets. Uh, let's configure further the widget for the region to trigger the load of the province when the user selects a specific region. Let's also add in the top bar the buttons for saving the information. And let's uh, connect, it, connect it to the save event that we modeled in the form. And let's also select a specific icon for this button. And let's also add the button that lets the user cancel the operation. And at this purpose, I use a predefined event which uh, uh, behaves exactly like the physical back button of the devices. And also in this case, I can select a specific icon. This is uh, the preview of what we did. Let's uh, move to the home screen where we added the event for selecting an office. And as you can see, the editor uh, creates for me a location where I can put the button for editing the office. And let's also add the widget that will show to the user the feedback message. And I, I choose a toast at this purpose. I have to say that I want to see it the mes as message in the toast, the message provided to the message component. Now we are ready to generate the application another time and see the results. Since the user already gave a creden uh, the, its credential, um, the user will be uh, already logged in in the application. So when I uh, reload the application in the emulator, I will see directly the home page with the new edit button here. That lets us go to the office management page where I can cancel the operation or I can load, uh, change the selection on the region and see that the province field updates itself with the new option list. And then I can save the, uh, the data and go back to the home page with the uh, feedback message. Now let's go to the platform and add another feature to the application, which is uh, the chance to see the customer detail. And at this purpose, I want to show you uh, how it's possible also uh, with Webrecial platform to model us piece of user interaction and uh, reuse it in many uh, places. Uh, what I have to use here is the concept of module. Uh, 
that requires uh, to uh, select uh, a specific module definition. The module definition basically is the container of all the user interaction model that I want to reuse. In this case, uh, I want to reuse the customer detail user interaction. In the proposed screen, I can design the customer detail using a dedicated component. This component can be configured as we did for all the others. So let's select the customer element and let's select which are the information that we want to see in this specific detail. This component uh, requires to know which is the customer uh, to be shown to the user. So let's uh, add to the entry point of this definition the information about the customer to be shown. This information will be bound automatically to the component and can be provided outside the definition from an event coming, for example, from the hierarchy component. So let's add here the event that allows to select a customer and to see the details, binding the key of the selected customer to the parameter proposed by the module. Now let's go back inside the module and let's model the presentation of the customer detail. I will use uh, the card widget for the customer detail and I can uh, configure the widget, for example, setting that I want to see as the title for the card, the uh, name of the customer. The subtitle will be the VAT number, and in the main part of the card, I want to show all the other information. So the industry type, the website, the phone number, the status, and the email information. And as you can see here, we have a preview of what the, how the card will look like. Now let's go to the home screen where we add the event for selecting a customer and let's add here the button for uh, seeing the customer details. As you can see, there is a location prepared for this event. Let's add a button widget related to the um, customer detail. Now we can generate the project another time to see the results. The module feature is very interesting because that, as you see, uh, you can define in a single uh, position all the user interaction that you desire and also the presentation of this user interaction. So the module is independent and can be reused as is in many places anytime you want to see, uh, you want to see for the user the customer details. Let's reload the emulator. We are going to see now the home page with the new button for see the details. And this is the card showing the details. Let's go back in the platform and let's see the uh, last feature of this application, which is the chance to receive push notifications. In particular, uh, we want uh, to um, receive notifications about the creation of a new customer. So let's add uh, an event here related uh, to the new customer creation. And uh, this event uh, receives a notification in terms of title and message, but uh, it can also be configured to have uh, additional parameters. We are interested in receiving also the customer ID, so the ID of the customer that has been created. And uh, we can also specify what happens when the user decides to view the content of the notification. And what we want to do here is to uh, bring the user to the customer detail screen. So I pass as the required information, the customer ID, received by the notification to the customer key parameter required by the module. 
to test this feature, we cannot rely on the emulation, but we need to create a real application package uh, that uh, can be installed on a physical device. So let's see how we can create a build configuration that let me create uh, an application package that can be downloaded and installed on an Android device or on an iOS device. I'm going to create an Android configuration. And here I have to specify as many information, the credentials that uh, identify the application. And in this specific case, I have also to set uh, the configuration for the push notification, which basically is a configuration file download directly from the Firebase platform that handles the push notification for the Android platform. The last required information is the URL of the application where the uh, application uh, controlling the data uh, is uh, available. After that, we can create the real build of uh, the, um, the model. This process generates the project and then uses a cloud service that is able to transform the project in a real application. At the end of this process, we will have a dashboard where we can scan the QR code directly from the device and install the application uh, on the device itself and test the push notification. This process takes a couple of minutes to complete. In the meanwhile, I can show you the counterpart of the notification received, uh, which is the emission uh, that uh, is modeled in my example in the data service project. In particular, uh, the service that uh, uh, emits the notification is uh, the one that uh, uh, saves the customer. And this is the model of this uh, uh, service. And as you can see, uh, when the customer is created, uh, then there is a, a component that collects all the devices that must be notified for the Android platform. And then this information are used uh, to send the notification using the dedicated component. This component requires uh, the title and the message of the notification, the list of the devices that must be notified with the related platform, and also can be configured to have additional parameters on it. And here we have the customer ID that contains the ID of the new, newly created customer. And finally, it requires also to have a provider of the push notification configured. This provider is specific for the platform that we want to notify. So it's possible to create a provider for the Android platform and a provider for the iOS platform. Now, in the meanwhile, let me prepare the screen to show you the result. Here you can see uh, the app dashboard where the build is in progress. And on the right, there is uh, the app I used for mirroring the screen of the physical device. Here we have the QR code of the application. This means that the build process has been completed. Now, Let's use an application for scanning the QR code. I'm downloading the application directly for, from our Cloud Builder. I'm installing right now the application on the device. I open the application and we expect to see the login screen as we saw in the emulator. I'm entering right now the username and password to login. I'm signing in right now. 
we should see the list of customers and offices as we saw on the emulator. So now let's uh, send a notification to this application. I have prepared a web application at this purpose where now I can log in. This application has been created uh, with WebRatio Enterprise Platform Beta as well. Now I reach the, the screen where I can create a new customer. Let's write here some information like the name, the VAT number, and let's select an industry type. And now when I press the save button here, the business logic for saving the customer will be triggered and so the send notification component will send a notification to the application. So keep an eye on the uh, app and should see in a couple of seconds a notification where I can click the I button and reach the, the customer details screen. With this feature, uh, the presentation of uh, WebRacial Enterprise Platform Night Beta uh, regarding the mobile development is concluded. Now I give the word back to Roberto for the questions and answers. Here we are. Uh, thank you, Michela, for this contribution. Uh, we are a little bit late, uh, so uh, I think we have only a few minutes to answer to your questions. Uh, first of all, I've seen a question about um, the beta program uh, and uh, the release dates. Uh, um, so uh, I want to inform you that uh, this beta for the mobile platform uh, will be available from next Monday, the 10th of February. Um, the one of you people that are already using WebRatio beta will receive an automatic update notification inside the platform. Uh, sus subscribers to the beta program that have not yet installed the platform will receive an email with the setup instructions. Those of you who have not yet rolled in the program can do so by sending an email to betaprogram at webratio.com. Um, the mobile platform beta will be followed by uh, a next beta release. Uh, I think in a couple of months, we will release the beta program for the VPN platform. And after that, uh, we will go in general availability. Uh, next question is something about um, migration from uh, uh, previous versions. Uh, yes. Uh, we will provide the migration from previous versions of the ratio platform. Um, migration tools will not be available at the first release of the general availability, but they will come with version 9.1. Uh, I see also a question about uh, what kind of uh, Java environment uh, uh, we have at the, at the base of this new version of Webratio. Yes, OpenJDK. Uh, is going to be uh, a supported JDP, JDK implementation. The beta um, demo that you just you have just seen has been done with OpenJDK behind uh, the Eclipse platform. Um, and that's it. And uh, yeah, I think time is over. So it's time to close uh, and uh, finalize this webinar. Um, before uh, you are going to log in out, uh, we kindly ask you to hold on for a few seconds again and complete the survey that will be displayed at the end of the session. So thank you very much and hear you soon.